What happens to innovation, resilience, and food security when the global seed market keeps consolidating around fewer species and fewer players? As Europe looks to stay competitive and sustainable, maintaining diversity in crops, genetics, and of course the companies behind them may be one of the most important challenges we as a sector face. To explore what's at stake, I've invited Regis Fournier, past CEO of Lima Grant Field Seeds and now strategic advisor to Lima Grant, and a long-term advocate for crop diversity and farmer choice across Europe, for a chat. Regis, welcome. Let's jump right into it. In Europe, 80% of acreage is corn, wheat, oilseed rape, and sunflower. Europe talks a lot about sustainability and resilience, part of which comes from diversity of both crop species and of course, varieties as well. So narrow it down for me. What are the critical, say, three reasons? Supporting diversity is just so critical. When it comes to food sovereignty, uh, we need to be able to secure a minimum of uh, supplying in the different crops uh, that we would need. And uh, if we talk about uh, energy, proteins, uh, fat acids, etc. So we need to, to have uh, the, the, all the range of what we would need to feed the population. That's the first criteria. And in this world, which is becoming more and more regional, that's a, that's a concern for the future. A second concern is the, the agronomy, the fertility of the soils. And the fertility of the soils require, if you want to sustain it and even to improve it, uh, to alternate the crops and to choose the right crops to, to keep the, the, the potential of your soil. And that's uh, and, and there also we have to, to propose as a seed company we have to propose solution for the farmer in the future, and maybe the third uh, the third criteria is the regulation, so uh, less and less pesticides, more and more constraints in the seed production to preserve the environment. So Regis, at a European level, do you feel that there is adequate support for research innovation on crop diversity? Maybe the the, the answer I could make is no, no, that's not enough. Uh, that's not enough, but we have national systems which are quite efficient and quite motivating to invest in research. If we talk about species, uh, Europe is trying to promote uh, diversity uh, and promote and develop the pulses, the, 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 the peas, the fava beans uh, and other types of pulses that we find in Europe and that you have in, in Canada as well. And uh, so there are some, some subsidies and some programs and uh, as Limagrand, we are participating to a, a, a very important one, where we uh, we have uh, we are spending uh, uh, with some uh, some help from the government and from the, the players in the in the food chain. Uh, we are spending 50 million uh, dollars uh, euros, sorry, 50 million euros over the next five years to develop the the peas and the, the genetic in peas to to develop this crop. So that's a good example of uh, of diversity that is promoted by uh, by the, the all the players of agriculture in, in Europe, the governments, the, and and also the the seed companies. The other piece I, I I know you've spoken quite a bit about Regis is farmer choice. The whole idea around how do we protect the farmer's ability to choose in a world where now there's so much consolidation and intellectual property regulation, concentrating power in fewer hands. So how do you see regulation being designed to best support farmers? We need to give him choice on the variety he wants to grow, on the crops he wants to grow, and the species, and on the variety he wants to grow. So that's why we need to develop a, a big range of portfolio. And the, the strategy of Limaga is to have a multi-crop uh, offer for the farmers, and it is clear that we have a, an original uh, uh, system of, uh, of, of protection of the IP in varieties, which is the PVP in, uh, in Europe and in many, many uh, areas in the world, not, not everywhere, not in the US. And we are very uh, careful on, uh, on the development of patents on, on those varieties, coming more and more with the, with the new genomic techniques that are about to be uh, deregulated in Europe, I hope, cross finger. In the past hundred years, farming has really shifted away from diversity. But now companies are talking a lot about resilience and sustainability and food security. And there's a push to at least a little more diversity 
including into cover crops to build soil. So do you think that that's happening fast enough? No, <laughs> no, I don't think it's happening fast enough. Uh, but, uh, but there is a clear constraint for the farmers is to make money to, uh, to sustain uh, the, the, the economic value of its, of its farm. And, uh, and at some point, it cannot grow. It's not worth at the moment to, to grow crops just to uh, uh, increase the fertility of the soil. That's not rewarded enough. And so I, I feel, yes, um, more, more uh, economic uh, subsidies uh, would help, uh, even if I know that that's not what the farmer expects. The farmer expect to be rewarded for what they produce, and uh, we need to find a way to uh, to motivate the farmers to 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 get value also by creating uh, an asset, by uh, improving the value of their soil asset. Uh, 